Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow. And in today's episode, I'm going to get into a little more of a, of a personal episode. I'm going to basically uh, cover what my room used to look like. Because uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, have seen some of the backgrounds and other stuff that I've been using uh, and some of the things uh, in my videos. Um, some people kind of wonder, well, how did you get it all started? And so one of the things I want to get, uh, I went through the archives and uh, found some uh, old pictures and that kind of stuff of what my first original room used to look like. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of history again. You know, um, uh, I graduated out of a tiny little uh, high school out of uh, Prince George, uh, which is about 500 uh, miles north of uh, Vancouver here. And I came down to Vancouver you know, after I graduated in, in 86 you know, to begin with my studies at uh, the University of British Columbia. Okay, and so I moved into this little sort of a uh, house uh, in the east of Vancouver, and I uh, lived in the basement suite. Um, but I, you know, took the liberty to basically, you know, decorate it and make it uh, sort of, you know, my own sort of uh, style. And of course, uh, it had my beginnings of basically how I started beginning in anime. Okay, so, so I'm going to basically go through and show some of the pictures and sort of describe some of the things that you may notice in the background, and that gives you an idea of basically what, uh, you know. Um, you know, my lifestyle maybe was and, you know, what was sort of really popular at that time uh, and what was going on at that sort of time back in like 87, 88, 89 type of idea, okay? So, as you can see on some of the pictures I show here, you know, I've got my basic, my, my, my collection of anime, which is on, you know, VHS cassettes and then you know, I just started, uh, you know, collecting them by going out to different video stores and that kind of stuff too, you know, and, uh, you know, basically making copies of some of the, the VHS tapes and, the, and some of the rentals I've done from some of the Japanese stores. And so that, I have this collection of that going, okay? I was also a really big fan of 80s music, okay? So my, you know, I, I, you know, I, I grew up in the MTV generation, in the, you know, much music, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, first choice and all that kind of um, networks that came out. And then basically, I, I loved it and recorded all the, um, music videos that came out in the 80s, okay? Um, so, one of the things I loved to do was, I, I, you know, I'd love to go out and buy those, you know, um, magazines, uh, which were all full of, like, pictures of, of uh, you know, famous musical artists and that kind of stuff. Again, my favorite bands at the time, the things I was looking for, were a lot of female bands. So, you know, uh, in my case, it was you know, things like Bananarama, the Go-Go's, the Bangles, Heart, uh, things like that, um, I was always looking for pictures of. So basically, I had those all stuck up on my wall. So predominantly, uh, a lot of those bands were all there. And then whatever left over posters of other bands I, I, you know, I was sort of interested in, I also stuck onto the walls. And you can so you see this big sort of mosaic pattern of pictures uh, uh, you know, along my wall. The other thing that I had uh, also hanging on my walls was the fact that I also was doing a lot of artwork and that kind of stuff at this time, okay? Now again, I wasn't a really good artist. I mean, I was one of those type of people that uh, really took a uh, you know draftsman approach to doing art. So I did a lot of uh, uh, skill work. You know, basically you grid off the picture that you're trying to draw, and you're trying to you know blow it up to a larger scale. So you know, I'd regrid off a, a larger piece of paper and copy the image uh, from the small grid to the larger grid. So I tried making things like you know a scale size uh, you know picture of like Min Mei and the scale size version of like uh, you know Madoka. I was you know, just drawing those type of posters and that kind of stuff. Uh, I know one uh, one of my favorite ones and, and one of the posters I still do have um, is a um, a picture of Madoka sitting on the side of you know by a, sitting by the side of a car. And then I had the lyrics of Night on the Summer Side um, translated in English uh, by Daisuke. And uh, he basically you know, let me try to uh, you know put together the song, and I wrote down the lyrics of it um, right beside the picture. Okay. Another thing that you'll see also see in some of the old pictures is that uh, you know um, uh, I just was still starting my book collection at this time, so most of the books I had were basically uh, role playing books, you know, like uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, and some other sub role playing games like Gamma World and things like that. Uh, you know, cyberpunk was also a big thing. I know that at this time, the you know the the art of Robotech and uh, the you know the, the Robotech RPG game sort of sort of came out. So I remember buying all those type of books. So I was just starting to get into, into, into that kind of thing. I didn't have that many Japanese books. I had the odd one here and there. I remember I, I had like you know the you know things like like the Dirty Pair, and uh, you know and of course the you know the big ones that uh, 
that was ever so popular was all the ones from Macross. Uh, you know, Macross Perfect Memory and those kind of things. You know, those are really, really popular books. So I remember having those ones at the very beginning. And, um, you know, and, uh, and as you see from the, from the pictures, you know, I didn't spend lots for like a shelf or anything. I was just using uh, good old fashioned um, um, milk crates. Um, which, uh, you know, basically back in the day, and still today, actually, they did, they, uh, you know, some of the companies, uh, milk companies, delivered the milk uh, uh, in these uh, plastic, uh, you know, sort of cube-like uh, containers. And um, since my parents used to have a restaurant, we still had some of those left over. And so I just ended up, they were just ended up being more or less the perfect size to put records in, but you can also put, you know, like books and that kind of stuff in them, so by using them to store and, and put books in them, and that's where I had basically all my art books and my RPG books and that kind of stuff, and I threw them into this, um, uh, you know, milk crate, and basically had them stored there. Okay, now again, a lot of you people are kind of wondering, well, okay, you know, um, if this in this time of uh, era, you know, we're not 1988, you know, what are the, you know, the technology that we need? Okay, again, so you know. I wasn't, uh, you know, dealing with a lot of commercialized equipment at this time. You know, again, just 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 started to go to University of uh, BC at this time, so a lot of the equipment I had was just basically, you know, just standard run of the mill, you know, VCRs and tape decks and uh, a stereo system. Okay, uh, the computer is at this time where you know I still had my you know my trusted Apple II um, uh, Plus computer. I had an Apple IIe. Um, I just recently bought the, you know, for school, a, um, a Macintosh SE and, and, uh, and some of the subtitling and stuff that we started to work on, uh, we, you know, I started playing around with using a Genlock on the old, uh, Amiga 500 computer. So again, these are the sort of the age and the era of the computers that we started to, you know, play around with and use, uh, around this time. So I just wanted to give you a, you know, a, a quick glimpse of what uh, you know, my life uh, style was probably like as a uh, you know university student, and uh, you can see you know it's uh, you know quite simple in many ways and uh, quite frugal in many others, right? So, but you know that that that, that was the beginning of how anime started with me and how I began uh, you know loving this uh, uh, you know this genre that we know as Japanese animation, and basically um, from here uh, this is what you know uh, I started to meet. All the different people uh, and uh, different, uh, you know, um, interests, uh, you know, started to go and basically start letter writing and, and learning more about this hobby uh, and this genre of Japanese animation. And again, um, you know, I'll cover in a further episode later on of how we basically began doing the fan subbing and, uh, and uh, what processes that we used and that whatnot uh, in a later episode. So what you want to do right now is you want to go down below here and click like and click subscribe so then when more episodes come out uh, then you'll be able to see that as well okay so until next time see you again